everybody welcome to radio labyrinth this is uh season five episode 51 our final show of 2020 our final like regular show we still have one more to record that we're going to put out and that is the uh who died 2020 and uh we'll, we'll do that next week and it'll come out uh, after christmas christmas week we are re-releasing our johnny brennan episode johnny brennan of course uh, from the Jerky Boys, and uh, it was a real good interview that we did with him. It was me, Ira, and Jeff. Steph, I don't think you were on that, were you? Mm-mm. No, not, but you were part of the show. I guess you just took off because you, 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 you hate prank phone calls or something, or you hate Johnny. When was this? You're a Kamal fan. Season two, so you would have been on. Uh, I, I don't know. I think, I can't remember why. I can't remember why. A lot of times back then, <laughs> if we had guests, Steph would say, I'm taking this week off. <laughs> That's true. I would do that. I hate the Jerky Boys and jerk offs. I like the Jerky Boys. I don't know why I wasn't there. I think I felt like I was just like, it's enough. I'll let you be all the balls and cocks in the room, and you guys just do what you want to do. <laughs> well, the balls and the cocks. So uh, I'm wearing my Buffalo Bills uh, shirt tonight because they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday Night Football. And uh, mm. that's a statement. That's a statement, as they say in sports talk. That's a statement. Because uh, up until last week or whatever it was, the Steelers were undefeated and Roethlisberger hadn't been sacked in like 200 passing attempts. Oh, yeah, well, he got beat last night and he also got sacked. And the Steelers did not do very well. And two of uh, our best friends are Steelers fans. And, boy, I feel really bad for them. Um, and I got my fish hat on because my hair, man, it is looking like shit. I need a haircut. I got to get a haircut. It's like I, I got this, I don't know, late 80s. Get a mullet going. Well, no, I don't have the mullet because I don't have the party on top. I, I mean, the, the business on, on top and party in the back. But I got to get a cut, so hopefully that will happen this weekend. You uh, have been looking, you've been looking like the guy that you would always ask outside of the liquor store if he'd buy you beer. <laughs> I lost my ID, too, but not in a flood. You know what that's from? No. American Graffiti. American Graffiti. Oh. Yeah, Terry the Toad. <laughs> I lost my ID. I'll take the comb. Uh, you used to work in a beauty parlor. You can't phone, phone, phone somebody up to come to your house and do it? Well, no. The, the, the woman who cuts my hair doesn't work there anymore. She works at a different place, and I just have been too lazy to go. So and, have her come over to your place and do it. I not going to come over here. She doesn't make house calls. She's not. She's like you. I'm not driving all the way to Tucker to get a gift that would have helped me tonight. Anyway, never mind. You should order a Flowbee or something. I don't know. A Flowbee? They have one at uh, Mary Todd, but they're not going to give it to me. Sean doesn't work there anymore. Um, so tonight on the show, we have a couple of radios joining us. I send invites out to three or four people, and uh, two of them are here tonight. We have uh, Beth Van Ellswick, who Jeff and I have known for, gosh, 30 years now. Can you believe that? And uh, we'll bring her on. And uh, Roby Neely is with us. He is the number one, perhaps only, fan of Mike TV. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, they'll be uh, be joining us to talk a little bit about 2020 and give us their staff picks and and wish everybody a happy holidays. Speaking of Mike TV, I will be on the next episode talking briefly about the Marvel lineup and the Star Wars lineup. Very briefly about Marvel because. Well, we'll get to that in a few minutes. We're going to be talking all about Disney's uh, big dump that they laid on everybody last week. So, hey, if you'd like to become a Radio Labyrinth patron, like the two people who are going to be on the show tonight, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. And we have a brand new Radio Labyrinth producer as of today. His name is uh, Chris Chandler, not the quarterback, but the, uh, the former WSB. No, not that one either. Wasn't that the quarterback for the uh, Falcons, Chris Chandler? Yeah. Yeah. Years ago, during the, the one uh, that got in the Super during Bowl. The Dan, during the Dan Reeves years. Dan Reeves. My <laughs> friend Haim Habib could get you the best diamonds, and I'll never, ever, ever have a Super Bowl ring. 
Uh, you know, not that Chris Chandler, a different, a completely different Chris Chandler of coming Georgia. And, uh, he ordered, he got his t-shirt. I ordered that for him today. So, uh, uh, you can join at that level. A producer is only $25 a month. So, well, uh, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, uh, so let's get started with the show. Speaking of a uh, podcast, I'm also going to be on the wilder ride, plugging our show and, and talking with uh, with uh, Walt and Allen, we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed being on their show. It was nice because I just sat back and they asked me questions and then I got to ramble about myself. It's fun being on their show. It is. And they run it like a real radio show. I mean, Allen is really good at the timing and okay, we're going to do this now. And he sets it up like a, like a real talk show host, which I like. I like that. You, you talk to them about how they're number five on podcast magazine. We're number 22. And like, how do we get there? How do we get past them? We all have to vote every day as many times as we're allowed to vote every day and encourage our audience to vote every day because that's what they do. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys all ready for Christmas? I am. Yes. I am, me too. I'm very ready for Christmas. Uh, I have all my, this is one of the weirdest years ever because I have all my Christmas gifts ordered and all of them wrapped. And I just have to get two more things, two more things. And usually it's the three or four days before Christmas. I'm waiting for that last paycheck and then I got to blow that all. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. I got a Christmas gift in the mail today from Stephanie. Y'all can't see this if you're listening, but... She got me this uh, Dunkin' Donuts sticker that says Dunkin' D's Nuts, which I'm going to put on my wife's car as a joke and see how long it takes her to notice it. No, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to put it on my computer where all cool stickers go. So thank you, Steph. <laughs> You're welcome. Dunkin' D's Nuts. So instead of making our guests wait the entire show, why don't we just bring them on right now? And, uh, and talk to them and see what they're up to. And I'm going to unmute Beth and unmute Roby. So welcome to the show. For having us. Yeah. Hey, guys. It's uh, good to see you both. And Roby, I know we've had on before. Beth, we've talked to on the phone yep. whenever you were uh, promoting your awesome hemp products. I uh, still still live in the hemp life. Living the hemp life out in Washington State. What's that like? Oregon. Oregon. Why do I always confuse? I confuse myself. Oregon. It's all right. Oregon. It's okay. You I don't. Cooler, I just don't Washington or Oregon. With Florida, that's all. That would be a bad thing. <laughs> no, I don't know. At least it's warm there. I'm sure it's not warm here today. How alike are Washington State and Portland? I'm in Oregon. Uh, I. I don't know. I think it's different. Seattle's a lot more uh, of a metropolitan feel to me. Mm-hmm. And and Portland is still, I mean, it's it's a city now, but it's still kind of more of that that neighborhood town feel. And then of course I'm I'm out on the coast, so I get to I'm on a, in Astoria and Gooneyville, mm -hmm. um, so I I couldn't be happier out here, and I don't I don't know of anywhere else that's like uh, north coast of Oregon. So right, that's the Goonie. That's where they did the Goonies, and isn't that yep. where the kindergarten kindergarten cop kindergarten cop? Yep. Who's your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> Roby, you're in Texas, ain't you? Texas. Yeah, y'all succeeding yet? When are you going to succeed? Uh, we'll probably never succeed. <laughs> 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 so you guys, thank you guys. You both supported us throughout the year and, and over the years. And uh, we, we, you know, we, we put it out there to, uh, to everybody who is a Patreon member to, uh, if they wanted to come on and, and we'll be doing more of that in 2021 because, uh, I believe we're all going to still be on, I don't know, some sort of lockdown, even if the vaccine comes out. So we're all going to be in our homes and we're going to be bored and we're going to talk about TV and, and stuff like that, that we enjoy. So, uh, I want to have more and more of you guys on to just share, you know, your staff picks and, and what you're doing, but, you know, tell us how you're wrapping up 2020. You guys, we'll start with Roby. Well, I am watching a lot of old stuff I haven't seen in a while. I've been through all of the Star Wars series, cartoons, canon, um, Rebels, Clone Wars, finished a complete watch through of all the movies. I am currently on a rewatch of The Wire. 
What season are you on? Season one. I'm just enjoying it, seeing some of these actors. I saw on your Twitter feed you were were you posting pictures of some of the actors who are now grown ups? Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan was just a little kid. Yeah, he is he was the most famous one there I saw. Mm-hmm. Now, season one is really, really good. Season two is also really, really good. What is your favorite overall season of The Wire? I think it's the one where the kids are in the high school. Is that or junior high? Is that season three? That's season four. Season, season five four. is the newspapers. Season three is the uh, season two is the boat docks, right? Right. So She's season done. yeah, season three is Amsterdam. Season four is the education, and then season five is uh, is the uh, newspaper and the serial killer that um, McNulty made up. <laughs> right. Spoiler alert. Um, so all the Star Wars stuff, you kind of got me into Rebels, which I'm really enjoying. And I am thinking about, and, and please don't hate me for this out there. I know none of you will. But I am going to start with the prequels and, uh, and, and do a review of all nine films. And then I have to watch the other ones. So whatever, you know, whatever. There's 11 movies, right? 11 feature films. Well, I'm not sure about how many. I know I started with the prequels. Mm-hmm. And then watched all of the Clone Wars. Oh, that's how you got to do it, right? And no. then I went through. I went through all of the um, between movies and Rebels, and then I I was able to finish out what was left of the um, original series and the final three. Now, did you go ahead and watch the Star Wars um, holiday special from 1978? <laughs> I watched it when it came out, and I just I just didn't feel like watching it again. <laughs> You've never seen it since the seventies. You haven't seen it since the seventies. I haven't seen it since the seventies. I still remember. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> it's terrible, but it's it it's, doesn't hold up. No, no, but it has B. Arthur in it and Art Carney and Diane Carroll. Almost as bad as the Ewok special with that little blonde-haired girl. What little blonde-haired girl? I don't remember the yeah, Ewok. Yeah, the little curly. She was on the TV movie. Yeah, for the the Ewok TV movie. Or that wasn't animated. No, it was live action. There was two of them. Action. All right. Well, do you have a staff pick? You know, right now I'm watching Shut Eye on Hulu, starring Jeffrey Donovan, who was in Burn Notice. Mm -hmm. um, it only ran for two seasons. It's about a um, con artist psychic who suddenly gets psychic abilities. And it's, it's a really good show. He works for gypsies, and he's trying to get out of, out of working for them. Are we allowed to say gypsy? He's working for Roma. <laughs> Roma. <laughs> Roma. I think we can say gypsy. All right. All right. Beth, what have you been up to? How are you wrapping up 2020? Oh, you wrapping roll it up, up like actually, a big fat uh, blunt. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, it's uh more uh my lovely vases I like. Wait, wait. Oh, show show that again. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Some craftsmanship Look. right there. Yes. Everyone Lovely living in a legal book. state, raise your hand. What's that? Anyone living in a state where pot is legal, raise your hand. <laughs> Fuck me. Notice that only Beth has raised her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking south. Beth makes me sick. She's always posting pictures of her by the seashore, just living the life, looking mm -hmm. so happy. Like and there's she's like on a farm and there's there's fruits. I mean, it just looks fun. Are you allowed it to say is. Fruits? I'm not gonna lie. It's a good <laughs> life. <laughs> you can. Depends on the context. Yeah. Yeah. Look. I mean, nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect. But I'm. I feel pretty grateful every day I wake up. So. Um, yeah. No. So besides, yes. Besides looking out my window and enjoying the view of of the river. Mm. Um. You know, I kind of flip back and forth between doing podcasts and watching stuff. Um, I didn't think I was going to get hooked on uh, Hulu's Your Honor. I was like, oh, here we go again. Another parent covering up for their kid when I saw the preview. But Stephanie, you started talking about it. And then we watched it and was like, oh, oh, OK. Yeah, it's a heart stopper. So you watch it last night. Yeah, that's the Aww. no, no. What we did was we've decided <laughs> we're so bad. We got so used to binging that we really hate having to wait a week. So we figure if we forget about your honor for the next two, three weeks, then we can binge a couple of, a couple of episodes. <laughs> What's your honor about? 
Oh, uh, with Brian Cranston and oh, oh, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and there's a an Hulu accident. show, right? It's yeah. it's on Showtime, but they show it the next day on Hulu. All on right. Hulu, yeah. All right. Flynn Flynn done fucked up. Yeah, yeah, but it's nice twists and turns that I wasn't you know expecting in that type of uh, story. Flynn is not it? No, but his his son done fucked up real bad in the, yeah. in the first episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see how that one plays out. Um, of course, one of my favorites this year was, uh, and ha- sad to see it go with Schitt's Creek. I just, that was just such a lovely guilty pleasure of laughter this year when that uh, came back. Um, I'm on my third rewatch. I could, yeah, it's I funny. I watch it all the time. Yeah, the humor it. is great. I binged it in about five days. I I could see doing that for sure. Um, and one of the things I recommend, and it's probably not one of the most popular, you know, it doesn't come up a lot in the algorithm, but uh, on Netflix, a movie called Grass is Greener, and it goes into the history of cannabis and uh, the jazz scene, where a lot of the lingo we even use today comes from, and just really gets into the history of, of the connection between cannabis and the jazz and, and hip hop movement through the years. And it was just really interesting. So I definitely recommend that. And on the same lines, uh, podcast wise, I really got hooked and loved The Dead and Gone. True crime combined with The Grateful Dead for me and just, you know, talking about what it was like uh, in, in the 80s and stuff kind of bouncing around and I don't know, you know pre-cell phones, uh, <laughs> yeah. pre-cell phones and festivals. I mean, we remember that life. Um, so for me, it took uh, one of my favorite genres, true crime, and then mixing in with the dead. And it's just a little bit of dead history they throw in with it, which is really good. And I don't know. I just think it was really, really well done. Really well done. And that guy, what's that called? Garage Land? Is that the podcast? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the Grateful Dead were carving out their own path. Well, it, <laughs> yeah, uh, that 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 would be my my top ones. But yeah, I did a lot of uh, true crime stuff. And now now I'm to the point where I've watched so much, but I'm like, so what are the good ones that aren't too cheesy on the ID channel? You know? <laughs> oh, that's like, the uh, that's the uh, murder porn channel. Yeah. yeah, I like to fall asleep to forensic files. It's soothing yes. to me. You know, you just wake up and they're talking about, and then they, they found the torso. It was boiling in a pot on the stove. And I'm like, uh. I think, Stephanie, you mentioned, and I thought I was the only oddball, uh, Dateline. What's his name? Uh, you can listen to, and he just, when he talks, on, uh, talks it just kind of lulls you to sleep. And then you said it. Oh no! I'm dealing with that, <laughs> I can't do it. Bill Bill Hader does the best impression of him, but Caitlin, my wife, watches that. Loves that guy. You sit down and it's mesmerizing, even if you don't care about what the story is. You're just like, yes. this guy. Yes, yeah, and it's like you know Josh Mankiewicz and you know the chick. They're both okay, but when it's a Keith Morrison, I don't care what it is. I'm gonna be into it just because his inflections and his delivery of it is so so funny. And Lester, no lips. Lester, I'm Lester Holt. I'm Lester Holt. I don't have an upper lip. I'm like Reba McIntyre. <laughs> no, Reba's always going, Chase. It always looks like she's saying Chase. <laughs> well, Beth, do you have a staff pick that you'd like to give us? Or are all of those your staff picks? I would say, you know, my staff pick would say, uh, give a watch to Grass is Greener. You know, learning extra history is, is always kind of, I don't know, I, I like learning stuff I didn't know before. So Me it was neat history. Me too. And thanks to YouTube getting rid of all the conspiracy videos, I actually learn real things. <laughs> oh, you of- and I have some great talks, though, about some good stuff. So You want to hear all about the Khazars and how they came to power and they took over? No, you don't want to hear about the Khazars. Nobody even knows what a Khazar is. Do you know what a Khazar is? That one I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to look it up yourself. Oh, I'm going to look it up now. Either that right. or I'm going to write all- the Khazars are uh, a Turkish tribe that lived in the Caucasus Mountains during a certain time, and then they were being forced 
between uh, the Muslims and the Christians. So they hated both of them and they decided to become Jews. And then they took over and became the Jews. And now all the Khazars run the world. Uh, uh, Mr. Jones, I think you have your facts incorrect there. <laughs> I was listening to an Alex Jones show the other day from uh, New Year's Eve, uh, 1999, going into 2000. And he was talking about now, now Russia. They just put in Vladimir Putin, and oh my God, if you—that is such a, a little microcosm of history. Didn't know what a nut this fucker has been for years, and but you listen to him back then, and all the shit he's lying about. It was amazing. I was actually listening to another guy that's dead now, Bill Cooper. If you know who William Cooper, oh, yeah. behold a uh, behold a pale horse. He wrote that book. Yep. And uh, he hated Alex Jones and he hated Art Bell. So you just call them charlatans and you do two hour shows about how awful they are. And all that shit's on YouTube if you're bored and have no life. Well, that, that's, uh, that's like uh, myself and our friend in South Korea who are like, oh, these QAnon conspiracy theorists. At least our conspiracies came through. It's like when we talked about the island and, uh, you know, the presidents going to the island uh, to be pedophiles and people were like, oh, it's a conspiracy. Oh, you mean Epstein? Can, you know, so we we have our own uh, condescending view of <laughs> oh, you conspiracy theorists nowadays. You don't know nothing. <laughs> I'm doing a commissioned piece of art on my iPad for our friend in Seoul or our yeah? friend Seth Gray. He Very said, cool. "Hey, can you draw Mitch McConnell being choked by uh, Frankenstein's monster in a MAGA hat?" And I said, "Yes." So I'm okay. that's, that's him. <laughs> Is Frankenstein's monster going to have orange hair? No, but he will now. <laughs> He's wearing a hat. Well, you guys, thank you very much for coming on the show. Do you want to stick around and, and, and watch it here? You're more than sure. welcome. Okay. I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. Hang on. I'll mute you. Shut up. No, I'm kidding. You. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. So let's get down to it. The Disney dump, the big Disney dump last week where Disney just said, okay, these are all the Star Wars and all the Marvel Universe uh, movies, TV shows, and whatnots that we're going to make. So let's start with Lucasfilm if you guys want to. You want to? Yeah. Yes. We should have practiced that so we were all coordinating. Uh, okay, so Lucasfilm, uh, they're releasing Ahsoka which I think is going to be a pretty awesome show. I love Ahsoka Tano. Um, I love who's playing her. We talked about it last week. I think she, she's a great fit. I'm just getting into season two of Rebels, and she's a primary character in that. Um, and we can talk more about that later. But what a great animated show, and I, I probably won't shut up about it until I finish binging it. Are you guys looking forward to Ahsoka? Yeah. Yeah, anything, uh, anything to do with the Mandalorian storyline, mm -hmm. which it'll take place during. So, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of there's a lot of shows that they're creating. Some of them I'm not too interested in, but here's an here's another one: Rangers of the New Republic. Now, this one is set in the same timeline, and it's of course Favreau and Filoni. Um, I don't really know what this one's all about. Do you got anybody? Any of you guys know? Sarah Dune, right? She was a, a ranger, wasn't she? Who? The the MMA girl that's on Mandalorian. Okay, so she's a ranger, and, and so that show will be about her and her group of people. Or where she came from. Well, it's set during the time, the same time, so I don't imagine it'll be any kind of prequel. But here's the thing. Here's a question I have. This is nine. The Mandalorian is nine years after Return of the Jedi. How did Boba Fett get so fat in the, and old in nine years? Everyone knows you have to eat your way out of a Sarlacc pit. I've said it before. I'll say it again. <laughs> so all he did was eat Jawas while he crawled his way out of that Sarlacc pit and sand people that fell in there. Okay. Okay. I get it. And became extremely uh, well-versed with a Banta stick. Yes, he was great with a Banta stick, and he learned martial arts. No, I love what they've done with these Mandalorian characters. It just made them the most interesting characters in the entire universe of Star Wars to me. I think they're more interesting than Jedi. I like their mythos. I like, I like all of it. So, uh, Andor says here uh, is a intense nail-biting spy thriller created by Tony Gilroy. 
Uh, oh, yeah, this is the one I don't care about. Cassian Andor from the Rogue One movie. Who gives a shit about this guy? It's a prequel, 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 prequel. I don't care. <laughs> but it's up to you. What do you guys think? I'm going to be watching all this shit, man. It depends on, you know, they're going to roll it out so they're not, they don't compete with each other, I'm sure. So you, there'll be nothing else on to just watch those. I just don't get it. I don't understand. Any, why would they make this show? I mean, that guy wasn't even the most interesting character in that show. What about the, uh, the not Jedi, the, the Asian guy who could use the blind Asian guy who could use the force. That guy's more interesting. I think. I agree. But that's the thing. Maybe they'll, they'll come in with this. These storylines from these are going to inter- intersect and can't, you know, the, jur- the journey it's going to take. It's going to, you know, maybe lead you to something and say, Hey, this guy's going to be important. But he, but he dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so does so does like a half the cast. No, all of them die. They all die, <laughs> except for Darth Vader. Uh, oh, here's one. Obi Wan Kenobi definitely looking forward to this show, especially now that we know that uh, Hayden Christensen is going to be on it. He is. Yes, he's. Yeah, gonna... he's coming in as Darth Vader. Yep, he's going to play Darth Vader. Has he been in anything since? He's, he's been. You think he's a good actor? He's, here's the the pluses. Is he um, a good actor? Well, hang on. It isn't written by or directed by George Lucas, which means it's a step up immensely from anything that he was in before. You know, that dialogue, especially from um, Attack of the Clones, is horrible. I hate sand. It gets everywhere. Yes, it makes my balls itch when I'm banging. Padme. Uh, I'm, yeah, he's, I don't know if... They haven't really said how he's going to be in it, whether it'll be a flashback, because, you know, they had all sorts of adventures. Um, oh, you know, by watching The Mandalorian and then jumping into Rebels, you find out that he actually had his own Padawan, who's Ahsoka. And uh, it would have been so cool if they had had some of that in a film before, the you know, Revenge of the Sith. But, oh, okay, here's one I don't know anything about. The Bad Batch. Who can weigh in on The Bad Batch? Bad Batch is an animated series. Um with the same style as rebels um but as far as the story it's a it's a group of stormtroopers that are set apart kind of like um i'm thinking the dirty dozen Mm -hmm. but of stormtroopers they also have red swatches on their shoulder and neck they're kind of a kind of like the green berets of the stormtroopers okay and this is about a batch of those guys that you know i don't think go rogue but i think it's going to be more their storylines kind of like a a group like the dirty dozen one thing i liked about the most recent episode of rebels i watched is they have to go find uh ahsoka sends them to a planet to find this this rain this guy that used to be in the clone army and they get to this and they have one of those old tanks from the from the prequel movies and there's three guys they're all clones of each other they all look like old Django fets but they hate the they hate the uh the empire and so they work with them but they weave that in there and then they explain how the empire says, we don't need you clones anymore. You can fuck off. We're going to, you know, maybe that's why the stormtroopers are such horrible um, soldiers. They're, they suck. What's that? <laughs> they're yeah. such horrible shots. Yeah. They're terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds interesting. Another one, star Wars visions is a series of animated short films, uh, which I think is cool. It's kind of be like an anthology thing where different animators from around the world do their own take on star Wars. So that's kind of cool. I'll watch that. Lando, this one I think everyone will watch. Lando Calrissian will be doing his own show by the creator of Dear White People. I think it's got to be a Smokey and Dear the Bandit Sand people. Off. You think so? Yeah, he's got to run. He's got to run Colt Forty Five from the Outer Rim to. Yeah, that ought to be a good one. Colt Forty Five from the Outer Rim. Yeah, and then in the sequel, he'll have a giant uh, bantha in a truck that he's got to take with Dom DeLuise across state lines. Is it going to be Carl Weathers? Why would it be Carl Weathers? I don't know. What? It's not going to be Billy D. Williams. <laughs> All right, the last thing I did was Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> no, I'm dead. Reginald Val Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would, he's dead, isn't he? What is no. That? So if this is a live action Lando show, is it going to be um, Donald Glover? Uh, they have it. Huh? Yeah. Maybe, sure maybe a combination of both. I'm sure they're going to throw a shit ton of money at him. Yeah. 
to try and get him. Another one, The Acolyte. Here's one I don't really know much about. Uh, a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic. So this comes before, um, before the prequels, I guess. This would be the this would be the fall of the Sith. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a droid story. Didn't they already do that in on Saturday morning TV in the eighties? C three PO. That sounds real familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Willow. Wait, what? Yeah, Willow. Uh, that's Disney Plus is putting it out. It's a, yeah. it's another. How is, that in the, doing it. how is that in the Star Wars universe? Oh, I guess it's, not. it's Lucasfilm. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right, Willow. Mm. I've only seen that once. Isn't that uh, that's Warwick Davis and uh, Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer, Ed, right? Yeah, Ed Mardigan. Mardigan. Yeah, yeah. Jeff and I saw that in the movie theater, and I was like, "Okay, this is kind of okay." I don't remember. Little, Go ahead. Kevin Pollock. Kevin Pollock and the other dude is the little. Yeah, the little nymph guys. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have to rewatch that because I haven't. Ever, I've seen it since then. It's great. I mean, it's a really good movie. I, I enjoyed it. I just now get tired of him saying, Laura Dannon. Laura Dannon. <laughs> now we move on to the part of uh, Disney dump that I don't really care about all that much, and that is the Marvel Universe, because I'm sick of cape shit. But uh, whatevs. We'll talk about it. Uh, the first one I am going to watch, WandaVision, looks really cool. And that comes out in January next year, really, really soon, uh, a month from today, uh, with Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, Jeff's favorite actress, Kat Dennings, is going to be in it. Yep. We know why. He loves her. She's a comedic tour de force. Yeah. With gigantic her boobs. Boobs are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, WandaVision looks really, really cool. Check that out. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, don't care. Looks but, good, though. I yeah, the, tra the trailer looks really good. And the shot here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why don't you care? Because I, I don't really care about I'm I'm ty I'm really, really like I'm just getting back into Star Wars because of the Mandalorian. It's gonna take a Mandalorian tier type of show to get me back into Marvel, but I just don't care. Just I don't care about superheroes and, and all their weird storylines. But it, it all depends. Loki I'll probably watch because I like that character. Always have like Loki, even in the cheesy late sixties. <laughs> you know, when you had the big yellow horns and the sounded like this. <laughs> uh, and I did like the Thor storyline in comic books. What if? Okay, I'm really. Yeah, those are great. Giving myself away. I loved the What If comic book when I was younger. I always got it with the Watcher. Um, so basically, it'll just take a Star Wars story and say, What if Spider Man were a woman? Yeah, well, what if Captain America was a zombie? What if. Namor had never found Captain America. No, Namor had uh, amnesia. He didn't know who he was. And then the Human Torch burned off his beard and he saw his reflection. He went, I'm Prince of the Sea. It was like, what if Wonder Woman ate a baby? Something like that. I mean, just what if? So, no, because if? Wonder Woman's not in a Marvel Universe. She's in the DC Universe. So Shut she, up. What if Wonder Woman was in the Marvel Universe instead? <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, that would be they, one. They did, some of the, they did some of those crossovers in, in, the, in the what if. I remember the DC, the DC and Marvel, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Superman fought the Hulk. I remember that. Remember when Marvel used to put out those holiday editions that were like huge? Oh, the big books. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They always smelled. Uh, Miss Marvel or Ms. Marvel? This uh, not, I don't understand. Who's Ms. Marvel? Not Captain Marvel. She's Ms. Marvel. No. She's the younger one, the kid. Um, yeah. Same powers as Ms. as Captain Marvel, mm -hmm. but as the teenager version. What about Mr. Marvel? Where does he fit into the picture? He went out for a pack of cigarettes one night and <laughs> never came back. Yeah, in another galaxy, he flew there and never came back. Well, that's where they have the best cigarettes. So. They do have the best cigarettes in other galaxies. Hawkeye. Okay. Don't need that. Okay. Yeah. I shoot it's it. like a Jason Bourne move, Jason Bourne show. Yeah. <laughs> the Dukes of Hazard, they shot arrows. It was more exciting because they would lean out of a car and shoot dynamite that never hurt anybody. It just blew holes and made a car flip and then 
you know, Roscoe P. Coltrane got out of the car and his dog was fine. She-Hulk, all right, Tatani, uh, Tatiana Maslany, I like her. And so I'll probably be watching She-Hulk. Again, be training they, myself. They announced that uh, you'll also get um, Hulk is going to appear in the show. I'm just going to um, and lecture you for half an hour as the as well as as well as Roth is coming back. Yeah, I like Abomination. I like that as, as Abomination. Yeah, they never I'll, really I'll watch Roth the, in anything. I want to see more of the leader. The leader was always my favorite Hulk enemy. Uh, even the goofy '60s giant head guy before he became before. Uh, God, who's that guy? Todd McFarlane made him into like the brain guy. You know, you saw his brain. What's his name? Uh, Monarch? Hmm? Is that his name? No, no, no. The leader. the leader. Oh, that, the leader? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, they teased the leader in one of the movies, but they never really did anything with him. Moon Knight, I never read the comic book or cared about it, but it, uh, it looks interesting. Uh, Secret Invasion. That's uh, Scrolls. So I don't really. Yeah, that's the storyline with um, Samuel L. Jackson and um, from Captain Marvel. When mm. they were in the 80s, and then you had the one guy that was the scroll that was actually a good scroll mm-hmm. at the end. Um, that's going to be it's going to be a series with those two, so which is going to bre- breach, I guess, the 80s to mm-hmm. the first of Iron Man coming, you know, coming in. It'll be that timeline. All right. Uh, then there's Iron Heart, uh, which is uh, uh, Chick Iron Man pass yeah. uh, armor wars don Cheadle. this draws from a sh- um the 80s there was a series of uh tony stark lost his company to obadiah stain because he was an alcoholic and he couldn't manage his company Rhodey had to take over the armor that's where this arc comes from about 82 that storyline mm-hmm. started and then Rhodey wore the armor and uh tony dried out started building his own armor got his company back this is all old canon stuff but those armor that was wars. the best arc too. His, yeah. his, his alcohol problem. That was a great arc. Yeah. That was when I was a kid reading comics. That was my week to week right there. Yeah. That and the Avengers were the two that I got every week. I got prescription. I got subscriptions to them. I, I enjoyed them. Uh, let's see. Guardians of the galaxy holiday special. Um, that seems cool. I love anything. Guardians of the galaxy. What do you guys think? Uh, today I, I just read a story that the, uh, What's the main character's name? Chris Star Pratt. Lord. Yeah, Star yeah. Lord is bisexual. I wonder how Chris Pratt's going to feel about that. <laughs> I was wondering that too. Because he's like kind of sort of right wing, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and especially the or family like, he married into. Yeah, super Christian. I don't know. Maybe he'll just be a cool actor and not, you know, pay it any mind and just do the role like an actor should. Uh, and then I am Groot, original shorts coming to Disney. So that seems cool. I like that. Um, so what do you guys think? You excited? You happy? Upset? Is there anything they left out? The huts of hazard? <laughs> that one would be great. Uh, I'm so about to get dunes. out of here. Below deck dune sea. So you think you're a Jedi and uh, who wrote Banta King? I like that. I did. Yeah. So that's the Star Wars and, uh, and uh, Disney, uh, Disney Star Wars and Marvel stuff that's coming out. Uh, in the near future. Don't miss it. Well, hello, everybody. Hey, it's Bing Trollsby here. By the way, you can get the Bing Trollsby. Well, it's more of a troll goose shirt. I'm not really related to that little green fella with earrings and the monocle i don't wear an earring well gosh darn it when i'm beating my kids i can't anyway i haven't beaten them in a long time because i'm dead duncan d's nuts all over Mm. (laughs) anyhow let's uh, play a little game here we got two of them this week two real quick ones here and uh, you know i added a little flair to these in the writing i i took a cue from the old red box troll and the way he would throw weird movie references and Weird character names in there, so we'll get to it. So, Rad Libs number one, uh, Dustin, we'll start with you and uh, name a family member. Grandma. Jeff, another family member. Aunt Phyllis. I'll just say aunt. Stephanie, something you buy for someone. 
Beast Nuts bumper sticker. Tombstone. <laughs> Dustin, descriptive adjective. Shiny. Jeff. Holiday. Holiday. Well, I fucked up, didn't I? Man. Uh, oh, hang on a minute now. All right, Dustin, you gave me the descriptive adjective. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, noun, Jeff, type of job. Is mapper. All right. Favorite job. All right, I thought that was funny. <laughs> Stephanie, give me a holiday. Um, <clears throat> St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. Do 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 do. Yada 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 yada. Dustin, an adjective. Sexy. <laughs> Jeff, public servant. President. All right. Steph, a family member. Cousin. Cousin. Mm-hmm. Dustin, verb. Choke. Jeff. Noun. Dildo. St- Steph, verb. Jump. All right, you ready for number one? Do it. All right, hang on a minute. Workaholic John Matrix wants to make things up to his grandma, Anakin, and his aunt, Liz Hanks. He promises to get Anakin the hottest tombstone of the season, Shiny Man, even though it's St. Patrick's Day Eve and Shiny Man is practically sold out. As Matrix hunts down the sexy gift, he runs into Jizmopper President Myra, another cousin on the same quest. With the clock choking down, Matrix's moral dildo is jumped as he starts to learn the real meaning of St. Patrick's Day. Jingle all the way. That's right, Jeff. You got that one. I've never seen that. What? You just made me want to see it. It would be good if they had jizz moppers in. (laughs) All Christmas movies should have jizz moppers. Yes. All right. Now we're going to go on to number two. Number two. All right. Uh, Dustin, we're going to start with you. Uh, No, I don't need to look anything up in the Oxford Dictionary uh, computer. Uh, Give me an insulting adjective. Fugly. Jeff, an age. 37. (sighs) Stephanie, time of day. Afternoon. Dustin, international city. Toronto. Jeff, family member. Uncle Phyllis. Okay. Stephanie, a room in your house. Bathroom. Dustin. Adverb. Sadly. Jeff, mode of travel. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You said sadly, right? Yep. Yes. All right, sadly. Jeff, mode of travel. Flight. Okay. Stephanie. Uh, Adjective. Yeah, that. Adjective. um, um, Grossly. Jeff. No, Dustin, noun. We're going to stop doing this. I can suck at it. <laughs> <Damn. Yeah. clears throat> Butt plug. Okay. That works way better than you thought it would. Uh, Jeff, a group of people. A superfluity of nuns. What? That's what you call a group of nuns, a superfluity of nuns. I thought it was a murder. No. Nope. That's crows. Superfluity? Yep. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Stephanie, I need a verb from you. Dance. Dustin, 
Give me a number. 22. Jeffrey, give me a gender. Gender fluid. Sis. Okay. Okay. That'll work. Hang on a second. Uh, Stephanie, another verb. No, it's a descriptive adjective. Stephanie, a descriptive adjective. God, why do you give me the hard ones? Go to, go to Dustin. Oh, they've already got them written down. Um, that's... In fact, a trolley's being a little redundant because adjectives are always descriptive. They are descriptive, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Unless it being trolls be. Um, let's say... Goose? Okay. There you go. Uh, Dustin, felonious crime. Arson. Jeffrey? Verb. Piss. Piss, you say? Yep. All right, Steph, the last one. Dirty verb. Verb of jacking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll wrap this shitty one up here in a second. All right, when fugly 37 year old nephew Buck acts out the afternoon before a family trip to Toronto, his uncle Phyllis makes him sleep in the bathroom. After the family sadly leaves for the airport without nephew Buck, he awakens to a gross butt plug and assumes his wish to have no superfluidity of nuns has come true. But his excitement dances when he realizes that 22 gender fluid criminals, the loose arsonists, plan to piss all over the kid's residence and, and that he alone must jack the family. <laughs> Anybody know that one? Let's just take a stab and say home alone. Home alone, that's right. We're 37 year old <laughs> nephew. <laughs> Pisses all over his house to keep the 22 gender fluid arsonists from burning it down. Okay, that's enough of that. Maybe we won't be bringing that back in 2021. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just not, I don't know. Steph, you want to do some stories? Uh, I, no, Jeff. Nicholas Cage is going to host that history of swear words on, Netf on, on Netflix in January. That looks mm -hmm. funny from Funny or Die. Fuck. Yeah, it's supposed to be like six episodes covering each word. Okay. Looks like it'll be pretty funny. Netflix January. Uh, they're rebooting True Blood for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. They, didn't, they pretty much said all they had to say. They had witches. They had oh, werewolves. They all left after like season four or five. And that's why it sucked. Yeah, and then it went straight in the toilet after that. So maybe right. him coming back, maybe he's got more to say. New characters? I'll give it a chance. I don't know. I don't know what. Well, even if they, even if they go into the the story proper, because mm -hmm. they completely ran the story different than the book series. Right. I mean, there were so much more characters, so much more where people, different animal people that were there. The fairies were a lot bigger, as far mm -hmm. as their you know vengeance and everything. A lot you know scarier. Um, they could take it a lot darker. I think it kind of played a little. I mean, for what it was at the time, it was kind of shocking. But looking back on it now, it definitely doesn't have the same replay that it would add back in the day. Right. I never could get into that show. It was always it was great for the first four, four or five seasons. Then it just, just went to Anna shit. Anna Paquin's Gap. I just can never. <laughs> yeah. I like Anna Paquin. Too much. Yeah. yeah. But Sucky. Even more than her. Sucky. What was the guy? Sucker. What was the guy's name that always, you know, he like wore lipstick and stuff. What was his name? Lafayette. Yeah, Lafayette. I love that character. He was my favorite character. Lafayette and, uh, God, who is the other one? Oh, and I like... He, uh, he passed away. Yeah. Oh, the actor did, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. 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 That sucks. Um, and I like Skarsgård. He was pretty cool. Skarsgård. What else, Jeff? Oh, they're going to make another Indiana Jones movie for some reason. Yeah, pass. <laughs> the Chronicles of old Indiana Jones. Okay. Indiana, Indiana oh, Jones oh. and the Kidney Stones of Doom. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the uh, adult diapers. <laughs> See what kind of treasure I find in that cave. See, they're doing an alien series. Noah Holly, dude from Fargo. Yeah, so I wondered at the end of it, is Ted Dancer going to show up and arrest them? 
Anybody get that, you know, in that episode of Fargo where the fucking UFO shows up for no reason? <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. Just like the weird ghosts in this season of Fargo. I was like, what the fuck are these things? And why do they affect this crazy lady? I just didn't understand it. I like Noah Hawley. I just don't understand some of that shit or what it has to do with anything. So uh, they renewed It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia for like four more years. Yeah, I know. It'll be the longest running sitcom in history. Which is fine with me because it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah it definitely it, is worth show. it. It is, but you you know how it is now. I mean, the last few seasons they have probably what like four really good episodes this season, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then the rest is just yeah, yeah. yeah it's still it's worth good. watching though. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I, I watch them all, but there's there'll only be like four where you're, you get that old sunny feeling. You know, we'll have like four really brilliant ones, and the rest you're just like. Neh. It's weird as I haven't watched The Simpsons or Family Guy in like three years, four years maybe. So I need to get caught up on those. But yeah, it's the same thing. You know, all right, you get tired of it. Well, who died? Well, rest in peace, Tiny Lister. He was 62 years old. He's, uh, I guess, best known as being Zeus. <laughs> or he was, in a, he was in a bunch of movies. Debo. Yeah, he was in Friday, but he's also in uh, the Hulk Hogan movie, and he was in the WWE. The old Bard, yeah. Yeah, yeah and he was Zeus in the WWE, I believe. And he was, and he was pre- the president in uh, Fifth Element. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Fifth Element's a great yeah. movie. Uh, and Charlie Pride, who I thought had died 20 years ago. But uh, get some Nigel, good morning. He was the first uh, prominent african-american country star and the last until hootie and the blowfish guy so it's been a long gap from 1975 to 2015 he was the king of the short natural yeah he rocked the short natural like charlie pride you've got to kiss an angel good morning you know that character in kentucky fried movie or maybe it's the other one but he's shim shimmery shim shimmery shim shim shimmery he was that kind of country guy. You know, now they have real country artists like uh, Lil Nas X. <laughs> really captures the spirit of the Deep South and Appalachia. <laughs> the garish country outfits. <laughs> so rest in peace, Charlie Pride. Um, regarding what we watched, uh, let's see. I didn't watch an awful lot. I started the Great British Bake Off. How about that? I watched like the, for the first time ever. No, I watched some of the older ones, but oh. season eight, Caitlin and I watched the first episode where they made all you know they had to make heads, cake heads, and that one lady made Freddie Mercury and the head fell off, and then. But all in all, I love that show. I love all the hosts. I love the 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 bald. I don't know any of their names. I love the bald guy, and I love the guy from the Mighty Boosh. He's really cool in his garish shirts. He's funny. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the lady with her cool hair. It's just a cool show, and, and I don't know why I don't watch it. If you're, like, in a shitty mood, you put that on. You're like, oh, okay, people yeah. make pastries. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's good for that. Yeah. <laughs> Mandalorian, good as always. Um, started Alien Worlds. I don't know that I'm going to continue watching it. It's just kind a of- good show to just get baked and watch because it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Right, right. We knew that on a planet – you'd have these things that fly down and they blow themselves up and they try to eat the bat, whatever. Uh, I watched Santa Claus is coming to town and I forgot what a douchebag burger meister meister burger was <laughs> and what a pushover that evil warlock was. Oh, you got me a choo choo. I guess I'll be nice. <laughs> they skipped through an awful lot of character development on that, but it was for kids. And also how hot Mrs. Claus was before. Like, and then in two years, she just blew up. <laughs> She ate her way out of a Sarlacc pit. That's right. The Star Wars Rebels, I'm on season two, digging the Darth Vader. Uh, below Deck, uh, they're starting to enter the COVID era, so I have a feeling that's going to be the last last season for a while. Uh, and then I listened to Bill Burr on Joe Rogan. And then for shits and giggles, you guys probably aren't going to be into this, but um, Tim Pool, if you know who Tim Pool is, he's kind of a, a, I don't know, he's a guy that got started covering BLM protests a couple years ago. Now he has his own channel, but there's a guy named Michael Malice who I like and Alex Jones was on his show and it's always goofy when they're not talking about, you know, the president or Congress, we're not talking about government and they're talking about aliens. That's what I like when they're talking about the aliens and the crazy shit like that. 
because uh, I believe in aliens and I think it's kind of cool. Uh, my staff pick is Talking Sopranos podcast this week with Annabella Shiora, who played that crazy nut in season three that uh, <laughs> reminded Tony of his mother. And that's mine. Cool. I didn't I watched, watch that one. So, oh, sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I watched Mando also. And now there really is only one episode left. Mm -hmm. Until Christmas next year. Yeah. Season three, December of 2021. I watched like four of those Alien Worlds. Like I said, it's good to just turn your brain off and just fun, fun to watch. Because mm -hmm. it's like cool special effects and animation and stuff. But the story is just total bullshit. Like, yeah, this this could happen if there was really an, an alien world. It makes it, it makes no scientific sense whatsoever. But it's just like people speculating about shit, and then they animate it, which is kind of cool. I watched uh, based on Steph's recommendation. I watched the Happiest Season on Hulu. That was What'd pretty good. It? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, well, it was really. I hated good. the sister for a long time, but then I liked her by the end. Yeah, they bring it all together at the end. It's a yeah, really it good, happy, watching. feel good holiday movie. All right. That was fun. Uh, I watched a show called Adult Material on HBO Max. It's only four episodes. What's that about? It's about this British porn star. And she's like on the verge of aging out. Oh, she's got to do milk porn. Yeah, she's still trying to stay relevant. Speaking of porn, let me interrupt. Did you see what Pornhub did today? Now that they changed the O to a wreath. They dumped all their non-certified uh, pornography. Built on the back of content creators and thieves. Same thing with Pornhub. All thievery and then content creators. Well, today they shut down all the content creators because Visa and uh, MasterCard shut down payments to them. So now it's just like YouTube and it's all the uh, porn companies running it. And so all the, I mean, not that I care. I'm just telling you, it's the same thing. It's one of those platforms where they invite everybody in, they build it from the ground up and then they kick them all out, which is what happened to YouTube. And well, people were complaining because people were posting like revenge porn and shit on there. Yeah, they can easily get rid of that. What they did, they, I think they used that as an excuse the same way YouTube used um, uh, right wing, blah, blah, blah. Is, you know, I mean, getting rid of Alex Jones, I understand why they did that. But there are tons of other people who aren't, you know, conspiracy nuts who are kicked off for the same reason. And it's corporate. It's all it is. It's corporate. It's, it's they make money. And these other independent people are going to have to go find another thing to do. Anyway, go ahead. All I know is that they have 67 categories more than I need. <laughs> yeah well seeing that's that they got 248 yeah. categories you're doing pretty good there's that many <laughs> I, you scroll if you scroll down i mean there's only so far you can go where i mean i'm just like no Steph just no. stopped the, fur, the furries it's just <laughs> some girl uh you know like being chased through a like a cobweb of cum being with a chainsaw and she's screaming and i'm like who is into this what who's watching this cobweb of what don't say it again. <laughs> that's the name of this week's show no it's disney dump i'm not saying putting cobweb of cum in <laughs> jeff text merry christmas merry christmas here's your cobweb of cum. <laughs> Here's your basket of jizz. Uh, Jeff texted me today, and he was he was hoping that Daisy Taylor's videos wouldn't be removed. I don't know who that is. Sure you don't. She I don't. can. Mm -hmm. and what's your staff pick, Jeff? Uh, for, I, I watched that Freaky movie, too, with uh, Vince Vaughn. Is that Freaky it's Friday Patrick knockoff? Movie. Yeah, but it's a horror. Okay. And it, it, was pretty, it was pretty good. It was fun. And uh, Roy Woolley, who we had on the show, was the makeup guy for that movie. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's on video on demand. Uh, my stat pick is the last blockbuster, which is another video on demand. It comes out today, I think, the twelfth, uh, fourteen. And it's about the last blockbuster. Oh, and, cool! Uh, yeah, like I'll I'll definitely watch that. Kevin Smith, Paul Shear, Doug Benson, uh, talking about it. Uh, Lauren Lapkus uh, narrates it. Looks like it's going to be pretty good. Cool. Um, you know, Mando, of course, like you guys. Uh. We are talking about feel good British stuff, the repair shop. Oh my God. You talk about. Yeah, that's good. I love the repair shop. Isn't it good, Dustin? Yeah, it, it's one of those weird things that you find yourself watching and you're like, I can't believe I've watched four episodes of this already. I'm like, I want 
to upholster furniture. I want to re- yeah. read. It makes have- everybody want to do it DIY everything. <laughs> There's just, and it's like you got Harry Poppins who's running this place. He's the shop foreman. And <laughs> like people roll up on the set and at the, the, first you get the story of the item that's broken or damaged. And it's always some touching shit that has to do with their family. And then they've got some expert in the shop that puts it all back together. It's, um, it's incredible what they do. But it's also just very soothing to listen to them talk as they're painting these little tiny things and putting stuff back together. So The Repair Shop, I highly recommend it. It's such a good show. Um, And it's on Netflix. And uh, like you, Tim, I watched an old holiday classic. I watched Charlie Brown Christmas because it was on, you know, Georgia Public Television. I got a bunch of the DVR. I'm doing it slowly. First off, the the color, the digitization of it. I mean, it looked so good. I mean, they have cleaned it up so well. It was, it was fun to watch. I did start thinking to myself, I don't think they had Franklin in this one because he would have outdanced everybody. So I think that's part of why they left Franklin out of this. Pink pen <laughs> broke wonder... neck dancing. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> the bass player, Pigpen, I was thinking, do you think it's like, you know, heroin addicts, you know, no junk, no soul. Did he like take a bath and then he couldn't play the bass as good? Anymore? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, to church. it's still good. You know, it's still, a, it's still doing the grateful dead and became a heroin addict or whatever and died. <laughs> and you know, you know, Lucy is everybody's manager. She's mm-hmm. everybody's manager somewhere. She's a pushy bitch. She is a pushy bitch. Um, so, but yeah, I, I've enjoyed watching it again. It's been a while. Your Honor, which we already talked about with Beth, love it. Last night's episode. It is so, you're sitting on the edge of your seat through the whole thing, through the whole I thing. So I, that. I love, uh, Brian Cranston. You, and he's so Cranston-y in this. So definitely watch Your Honor. Uh, Billions, Jeff, I finally started watching Billions because I, you know, bootlegged your Showtime, mm. your Showtime shit and I, I'm getting into Billions. I like it. And, uh, it's, it's good up until season five and then it starts to drop off but oh, well, season okay. five I mean, got shut down because of covid so hopefully they'll bounce back after they start production again yeah it's you know it's like out there it's one of those but it, it is fun to see all the crazy shit that they do in uh, lab pennyworth came back last night nice it's so it was good it was a great return you it, still didn't set it up eyebrow between seasons yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so definitely watch pennyworth and my staff pick is uh this is probably the only time I'll ever pick something on the CW, but December 17th, it's the dogs of the year. Nice. And it's, it's just uh, all of the dogs that have had like big stories in the year 2020. They've done something cool or amazing. Did friend make it? No. Well, oh. yeah, that cop's dog should be on there. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? Mattis might be on there. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know if you've been watching his Instagram, but he's got a puppy now. I see. I think he's training him for Mattis's replacement because Mattis is seven, I think. Yeah, he's long so, in the tooth. Yeah, they have to retire him. I think by the time they're nine, they have to get retired or something. So I think that's his replacement. But anyway, that's that's all my crap. Well, dust it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll watch Mando, of course. Um, great episode. Um, Alien Worlds. I did watch the first episode of that. And uh, yeah, it's it's like someone trying to learn how to do special effects, and they were like, "Let's just build a story around it." Yeah, uh, we have um, bats. I, I watched uh, on Jeff's recommendation. I watched some of that uh, Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun, yeah, that was, that was the Australian boring. show. That is so out there and wild, um, but yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, reminds me of um, the Happy Fun drunk and drugs hour from trailer park boys yeah. uh, that they did very similar um also watched a couple of the episodes of the liberator on netflix that it's, chair uh, endorse <laughs> the liberator yeah <laughs> it's uh th- this is a pretty cool it's it's a series on netflix about a group of guys in world war ii uh but it's it's shot with that um how they they shoot it and then they put a filter over it that looks like it's drawn rotoscope so it, it, yeah it's rotoscope. N- n- it's kind of like a digital version of rotoscope yeah uh so it, like scanner it, darkly it looks like with scanner Zelda darkly Alex jones it looks like scanner darkly but but not as uh uh out there it's it's more a little more patterned um than scanner darkly was oh, that Lord of the, the Rings movie that uh back in 
that one yeah that now that was rotoscope yeah straight up rotoscope uh this one it's it's good but it it kind of deals a lot more it's more modern storytelling so it goes into a, it follows the thunderbirds which are a group of um american indian mexican and cowboy soldiers from wyoming they during world war II. High school. <laughs> yeah exactly and um so it's pretty it's a pretty neat show um they kind of use that gimmick a little push on it a little too much but the story itself carries it pretty good oh and my staff pick is uh since we won't have another show before the end of the year uh letter kenny new season starts the 26th of december yeah, on Hulu. this you. is season eight nine nine right. i'm gonna have to watch it i'm gonna have to watch it all right, I'm going to bring Beth and, and Roby back in to say goodbye, you guys. I tried to unmute you. Are you unmuted? I keep trying to unmute. Beth, say something. Hey, I'm back. Okay, you're back. Roby, can you say something? Okay, nobody's muted anymore. Uh, I just want to say thank you guys for coming on and sitting through the show with us and uh, being with us all year long. And uh Really appreciate all your support, you know, listening, tweeting, interacting with us on social media. And I want to wish you guys happy holidays, happy new year, and hopefully we'll see more of you in 2021. We shall be here. Absolutely. And and don't listen to Mike TV. No, I'm kidding. I love Mike TV. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have gotten through Legion without Mike TV. Well, that's a ringing endorsement, Be uh, Beth. I think that Lisa will be very happy to hear that. Yeah, no, seriously. I liked Legion, but I, I couldn't have gotten through it without my TV. <laughs> you can hear her um, scolding me and uh, Dean for not liking uh, uh, the ending of Fargo. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. All right, guys, thank you very much. Everybody have a happy holiday. Don't forget we have the Who Died episode coming up uh, New Year's week and then next week. We have the the reissue of our uh, of our episode with uh, Johnny Brennan, the New Jersey. That was a really good interview we did with Johnny Brennan. That's why that's why we thought we should, we'd put it out again. Because yeah, he, we've he's all listened. Of, Go ahead, Jeff. He's done a lot of press because the new album came out a couple of weeks ago, and some of these shows and stuff that he's been on, he's done a real tough interview. Well, yeah, I don't think a lot of them get him, and then the ones that do get him push him a little too much. I don't know. He but he felt. I have a feeling that he was really comfortable with us. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I thought we we got we had a real good conversation with him. Yeah, but he, he could tell we were fans. Right. So, I think that made him feel more comfortable. All right, I want to get all of us at the same time to say it. Until next week, please remember to be fit and. Fit and, 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 and.